All right, I'm with Dale Greer, Director of Coleman Economic Development. Dale, thanks for talking to me. We're, we're welcoming me in the new year. Uh, I understand you were at the uh, Crimson Tide's victory over in Atlanta. I rolled Tide, absolutely. You felt good about that, didn't God, you? God, it's a pretty remarkable game. How was, was your, nice how, how was your uh, cardiac? Uh, <laughs> you weren't feeling great at halftime, were you? Not at halftime, not at the end of regulation, not at the end of the first overtime, not after the sack. <laughs> I felt good only for a few seconds on one play. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I'm here to talk to you about uh, the announcement of the Mazda Toyota plant not too far from us up in Limestone County. And I've heard all sorts of people in Coleman say, oh, it's going to be great for this. It's going to be bad for that. Oh, our economy is going to boom. And I've heard people go, oh, gosh, no, we're going to suck all of our employees out. We'll all, the employment rate will go up. I thought, well, who better to answer the question? <laughs> what really is going to happen is uh, my psychic a seer of all things economics is you. Well, what's going to happen there? Uh, you know, probably a little bit of all of the things that you said. I, it is a great win for the state of Alabama. If you look at the incentives offered by North Carolina, there was a fraction of that for Alabama, and it, it's pretty impressive that the state won, which I think is a real compliment to the labor force here, the growth of the automotive industry, success we've had behind Mercedes and Honda and Hyundai and the Toyota plant in Huntsville and all types of things like that. And so that you think that was one of the, the major drivers to get them to come here because this kind of become the automotive capital of the South, right? That's right. And then you already have a great network of uh, potential suppliers to them. And Huntsville has its own set. But then throughout North Alabama, you have a, a pretty well sprinkled supplier network that could really benefit that company, save them some money. Now let's talk a little bit about employment and unemployment. Uh, Coleman is historically lo low right now. I've, I've talked to business owners, and big, small, in between. They can't hardly find applicants, and uh, it's a challenge to get new people in the door. I, I suspect we're going to have a sucking sound of employment out of Coleman County up to there. You, would you say that that's that's going to be true? Well, no, don't, don't make me say sucking sound. You know, that okay. sounds like a <laughs> terrible thing. You know, obviously. Uh, uh, Toyota then announced uh, wages of 50000 a year's annual salary and that kind of thing. That will be very attractive to many people. Uh, you know, Coleman is already a bedroom community in a lot of ways to Huntsville and Birmingham. A lot of labor travels to there. We're so mobile. It's so easy to go into those kind of situations. So uh, we have people working at Mercedes. We have people working at Honda, and that's 100 miles away. Uh, so you know, I think, obviously, you will have some that will be attracted to uh, those jobs in Huntsville. Sure. Well, I talked to uh, Senator Busman earlier today, and uh, it was surprising when he told me that he thought that what we needed in Coleman County in Alabama is to increase the population. Oh, I, I think that as well. I think the, the next challenge for us, it, it, you know, in Coleman, you said unemployment, we're the second lowest in the state. The population in Alabama is not growing very well. If you continue to create jobs, it seems to me that the only way to fill those is to increase your population. So I think one of our big challenges in, uh, that is already here is how do we attract people to fill these jobs? You know, if, you, if your theory is right that in mind that many of these people are going to leave Coleman and go to the Toyota Mazda facility, well, they're already working here somewhere. So those companies lose those people, and then they have to backfill with those. And if you don't have those folks, you know, where, where do you backfill to? The upper echelons in the pay scale is the one who gets the workers. Well, it's, it sounds like an employee's market because, okay. you know, That's if, very you, true. if you can't get help, you're going to have to raise your, raise your salary, raise your benefits. And so that's good for, for us little folks out there. Well, sure. You, uh, it's good if you're a city, if you're a community, you want higher wages. It gives you a a better tax base, you know, and you get more retail sales and the benefits off of those. But if you're the one paying those people, well, you want to pay a decent living wage and that kind of stuff, but you want it as competitive and reasonable as possible. Well, now, what we know for sure is there's going to be roughly 4,000 jobs. Uh, if there's really 2.3 people per household, that's going to be 10, 12,000 people up there, plus suppliers. Uh, for my looking at a map, there's not uh, housing additions up there. I mean, where are these people going to live? And that's part of back to what you're saying about being bedroom communities and, and yeah. commuter. And, you know, it'll affect, um, in Coleman, 30% of our labor force is driving out of town. They're going to Birmingham and Huntsville and Decatur. So they live here. They choose to work in those other communities. 
So I could see there being additional housing for us and within a reasonable drive of that new plant for all of North Alabama. Um, that, do I think it'll be the greatest retail boom in history? No, and I think there'll definitely be some new houses built because of that and new residents associated with it. Well, it seems like developers, uh, home builders, multifamily builders would would be thinking in those terms immediately. Uh, we think so. Yeah, so that's how that works. Any other thoughts on that? You know, I think, uh, and, and I was telling a guy the other day who was asking me about the potential impact for us that, you know, when Mercedes came in, Coleman got the first tier one manufacturer in uh, Rahal that followed Mercedes to Alabama. We've got tier one suppliers to Honda, to Nissan, to Toyota. So you would think that many of our existing industries would have an opportunity to do business with the new company, with the new OEM. And then there'll be some opportunities for new suppliers to locate within that hour and a half just in time supply. And Coleman ought to be very close. You look at the location of that plant, it is on our end of town. It is near the I-65, 565 interchange, you know, 30 minutes, a few more for us. So I think it's a great opportunity for our community to benefit. Well, and you'll be the first to know as we benefit, won't you? I'll be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but that's only because they come in and say, where's the property, where's the buildings, where's the site? You know, we've got a pretty extensive database of that kind of thing. So one final question, Dale. You, you've been the boss man around here for you know a few weeks now. How, how does it feel to... Uh, have, have some autonomy and, and call the shots. Hey, you know, uh, development is really a team effort. It is a community effort. It's involving the right people at the right time in every project. And, uh, you know, it's what I always did as the second here with Peggy, and we did it together and shared those things. And uh, she's over to chamber now, but still have access to get her on some things that I need. And, uh, but it's fun. I've been here a long time, and I like it. And, uh, I wouldn't change it for many things. Well, I've noticed one change, and, and it's pretty simple. When I sat down to do the interview, he said, Tim, why don't we turn on the lights? And I said, we can't do that. You, know, you try to run a tight budget, or he goes, well, Peggy's not here. We can turn on the lights. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate you. we got some good lighting on you today, and I normally don't get that. So I, I appreciate that part of it. Now, if you run that, both of us are going to be in trouble. <laughs> okay, I'll cut that part out.